Know, O oh my daughter, that there was once a merchant who owned much money and many men, and who was rich in cattle and camels, he had also a wife and family and he dwelt in the country, being experienced in husbandry and devoted to agriculture. Now Allah Most High had endowed him with understanding the tongues of beasts and birds of every kind, but under pain of death if he divulged the gift to any. So he kept it secret for very fear. He had in his cowhouse a bull and an ass each tethered in his own stall one hard by the other. As the merchant was sitting near hand one day with his servants and his children were playing about him, he heard the bull say to the ass, Hail and health to thee O father of waking! For that thou enjoyest rest and good ministering, all under thee is clean swept and fresh sprinkled, men wait upon thee and feed thee, and thy provant is sifted barley and thy drink pure spring water, while I, unhappy creature, am led forth in the middle of the night, when they set on my neck the plough and a something called yoke, and I tire at cleaving the earth from dawn of day till set of sun. I am forced to do more than I can and to bear all manner of ill-treatment from night to night, after which they take me back with my sides torn, my neck flayed, my legs aching and mine eyelids soared with tears. Then they shut me up in the byre and throw me beans and crushed straw, mixed with dirt and chaff, and I lie in dung and filth and foul stinks through the livelong night. But thou art ever in a place swept and sprinkled and cleansed, and thou art always lying at ease, save when it happens, and seldom enough, that the master hath some business, when he mounts thee and rides thee to town and returns with thee forthright. So it happens that I am toiling and distressed while thou takest thine ease and thy rest, thou sleepest while I am sleepless, I hunger still while thou eatest thy fill, and I win contempt while thou winnest good will. When the bull ceased speaking, the ass turned towards him and said, O broad a brow, O thou lost one! He lied not who dubbed thee bullhead, for thou, O father of a bull, hast neither forethought nor contrivance, thou art the simplest of simpletons, and thou knowest not of good advisers. Hast thou not heard the saying of the wise? For others these hardships and labors I bear and theirs is the pleasure and mine is the care. As the bleacher who blacketh his brow in the sun to whiten the raiment which other men wear. But thou, O fool, art full of zeal and thou toilest and molest before the master, and thou tearest and wearest and slayest thyself for the comfort of another. Hast thou never heard the saw that saith, None to guide and from the way go wide? Thou wendest forth at the call to dawn prayer and thou returnest not till sundown, and through the livelong day thou endurest all manner hardships, to wit, beating and belaboring and bad language. Now hearken to me, Sir Bull. When they tie thee to thy stinking manger, thou pawest the ground with thy forehand and lashest out with thy hind hoofs and pushest with thy horns and bellowest aloud, so they deem thee contented. And when they throw thee thy fodder thou fallest on it with greed and hastenest to line thy fair fat paunch. But if thou accept my advice it will be better for thee and thou wilt lead an easier life even than mine. When thou goest a field and they lay the thing called yoke on thy neck, lie down and rise not again though haply they swinge thee, and, if thou rise, lie down a second time, and when they bring thee home and offer thee thy beans, fall backwards and only sniff at thy meat and withdraw thee and taste it not, and be satisfied with thy crushed straw and chaff, and on this wise fame thou art sick, and cease not doing thus for a day or two days or even three days, so shalt thou have rest from toil and moil. When the bull heard these words he knew the ass to be his friend and thanked him, saying, Write as thy read, and prayed that all blessings might requite him, and cried, O father wakener! Thou hast made up for my failings. Now the merchant, O my daughter, understood all that passed between them, next day the driver took the bull, and settling the plough on his neck made him work his want, but the bull began to shirk his ploughing, according to the advice of the ass, and the ploughman drubbed him till he broke the yoke and made off, but the man caught him up and leathered him till he despaired of his life. Not the less, however, would he do nothing but stand still and drop down till the evening. Then the herd led him home and stabled him in his stall, but he drew back from his manger and neither stamped nor ramped nor butted nor bellowed as he was wont to do, whereat the man wondered. He brought him the beans and husks, but he sniffed at them and left them and lay down as far from them as he could and passed the whole night fasting. The peasant came next morning, and, seeing the manger full of beans, the crushed straw untasted and the ox lying on his back in sorriest plight, with legs outstretched and swollen belly, he was concerned for him, 
and said to himself, By Allah, he hath assuredly sickened and this is the cause why he would not plough yesterday. Then he went to the merchant and reported, O oh my master, the bull is ailing, he refused his fodder last night, nay more, he hath not tasted a scrap of it this morning. Now the merchant farmer understood what all this meant, because he had overheard the talk between the bull and the ass, so quoth he, Take that rascal donkey, and set the yoke on his neck, and bind him to the plough and make him do bull's work. Thereupon the ploughman took the ass, and worked him through the livelong day at the bull's task, and, when he failed for weakness, he made him eat stick till his ribs were sore and his sides were sunken and his neck was flayed by the yoke, and when he came home in the evening he could hardly drag his limbs along, either forehand or hind legs. But as for the bull, he had passed the day lying at full length and had eaten his fodder with an excellent appetite, and he ceased not calling down blessings on the ass for his good advice, unknowing what had come to him on his account. So when night set in and the ass returned to the byre the bull rose up before him in honour, and said, May good tidings gladden thy heart, O father wakener! Through thee I have rested all this day and I have eaten my meat in peace and quiet. But the ass returned no reply, for wrath and heart burning and fatigue and the beating he had gotten, and he repented with the most grievous of repentance, and quoth he to himself, This cometh of my folly in giving good counsel, as the saw saith, I was in joy and gladness, not save my officiousness brought me this sadness. But I will bear in mind my innate worth and the nobility of my nature, for what saith the poet? Shall the beautiful hue of the basil fail though the beetle's foot or the basil crawl? And though spider and fly be its denizens shall disgrace attach to the royal hall. The cowrie, I can, shall have currency but the pearl's clear drop, shall its value fall? And now I must take thought and put a trick upon him and return him to his place, else I die. Then he went a weary to his manager, while the bull thanked him and blessed him. And even so, O oh my daughter, said the wazir, thou wilt die for lack of wits, therefore sit thee still and say not and expose not thy life to such stress, for, by Allah, I offer thee the best advice, which cometh of my affection and kindly solicitude for thee. O oh my father, she answered, needs must I go up to this king and be married to him. Quoth he, do not this deed, and quoth she, of a truth I will, whereat he rejoined, if thou be not silent and bide still, I will do with thee even what the merchant did with his wife. And what did he? asked she. No then, answered the wazir, that after the return of the ass the merchant came out on the terrace roof with his wife and family, for it was a moonlit night and the moon at its full. Now the terrace overlooked the cowhouse and presently, as he sat there with his children playing about him, the trader heard the ass say to the bull, Tell me, O father brought a brow, what thou purposest to do tomorrow. The bull answered, What but continue to follow thy counsel, O Alaboron? Indeed it was as good as good could be and it hath given me rest and repose, nor will I now depart from it one tittle, so, when they bring me my meat, I will refuse it and blow out my belly and counterfeit crank. The ass shook his head and said, Beware of so doing, O father of a bull. The bull asked, Why? And the ass answered, Know that I am about to give thee the best of counsel, for verily I heard our owner say to the herd, If the bull rise not from his place to do his work this morning and if he retire from his fodder this day, make him over to the butcher that he may slaughter him and give his flesh to the poor, and fashion a bit of leather from his hide. Now I fear for thee on account of this. So take my advice ere a calamity befall thee and when they bring thee thy fodder eat it and rise up and bellow and paw the ground, or our master will assuredly slay thee, and peace be with thee. Thereupon the bull arose and lowed aloud and thanked the ass, and said, Tomorrow I will readily go forth with them, and he at once ate up all his meat and even licked the manger. All this took place and the owner was listening to their talk, next morning the trader and his wife went to the bull's crib and sat down, and the driver came and led forth the bull who, seeing his owner, whisked his tail and break wind, and frisked about so lustily that the merchant laughed a loud laugh and kept laughing till he fell on his back. His wife asked him, Whereat laughest thou with such loud laughter as this? And he answered her, I laughed at a secret something which I have heard and seen but cannot say lest I die my death. She returned, Perforce thou must discover it to me, and disclose the cause of thy laughing even if thou come by thy death. 
But he rejoined, I cannot reveal what beasts and birds say in their lingo for fear I die. Then quoth she, By Allah, thou liest. This is a mere pretext, thou laughest at none save me, and now thou wouldest hide somewhat from me. But by the Lord of the heavens! And thou disclose not the cause I will no longer cohabit with thee, I will leave thee at once. And she sat down and cried. Whereupon quoth the merchant, Woe betide thee! What means thy weeping? Fear Allah and leave these words and query me no more questions. Needs must thou tell me the cause of that laugh, said she, and he replied, Thou wottest that when I prayed Allah to vouchsafe me understanding of the tongues of beasts and birds, I made a vow never to disclose the secret to any under pain of dying on the spot. No matter, cried she, tell me what secret passed between the bull and the ass and die this very hour and thou be so minded, and she ceased not to importune him till he was worn out and clean distraught. So at last he said, Summon thy father and thy mother and our kith and kin and sundry of our neighbors, which she did, and he sent for the Kazi and his assessors, intending to make his will and reveal to her his secret and die the death, for he loved her with love exceeding because she was his cousin, the daughter of his father's brother, and the mother of his children, and he had lived with her a life of an hundred and twenty years. Then, having assembled all the family and the folk of his neighborhood, he said to them, By me there hangeth a strange story, and tis such that if I discover the secret to any, I am a dead man. Therefore quoth every one of those present to the woman, all it upon thee, leave this sinful obstinacy and recognize the right of this matter, lest haply thy husband and the father of thy children die. But she rejoined, I will not turn from it till he tell me, even though he come by his death. So they ceased to urge her, and the traitor rose from amongst them and repaired to an outhouse to perform the vuzu ablution, and he purposed thereafter to return and to tell them his secret and to die. Now, daughter Shahrazad, that merchant had in his outhouses some fifty hens under one cock, and whilst making ready to farewell his folk he heard one of his many farm dogs thus address in his own tongue the cock, who was flapping his wings and crowing lustily and jumping from one hen's back to another and treading all in turn, saying O Chanticleer! How mean is thy wit and how shameless is thy conduct! Be he disappointed who brought thee up? Art thou not ashamed of thy doings on such a day as this? And what, asked the rooster, hath occurred this day. When the dog answered, Dost thou not know that our master is this day making ready for his death? His wife is resolved that he shall disclose the secret taught to him by Allah, and the moment he so doeth he shall surely die. We dogs are all a mourning, but thou clappest thy wings and clarinest thy loudest and treadest hen after hen. Is this an hour for pastime and pleasuring? Art thou not ashamed of thyself? Then by Allah, quoth the cock, is our master a lack wit and a man scanty of sense, if he cannot manage matters with a single wife, his life is not worth prolonging. Now I have some fifty dame partlets, and I please this and provoke that and starve one and stuff another, and through my good governance they are all well under my control. This our master pretendeth to wit and wisdom, and he hath but one wife, and yet knoweth not how to manage her. Ask the dog, What then, O cock? should the master do to win clear of his strait? He should arise forthright, answered the cock, and take some twigs from yon mulberry tree and give her a regular back basting and rib roasting till she cry, I repent, O oh my lord! I will never ask thee a question as long as I live. Then let him beat her once more and soundly, and when he shall have done this he shall sleep free from care and enjoy life. But this master of ours owns neither sense nor judgment. Now, Daughter Shahrazad, continued the wazir, I will do to thee as did that husband to that wife, said Shahrazad, and what did he do? He replied, When the merchant heard the wise words spoken by his cock to his dog, he arose in haste and sought his wife's chamber, after cutting for her some mulberry twigs and hiding them there, and then he called to her, Come into the closet that I may tell thee the secret while no one seeth me and then die. She entered with him and he locked the door and came down upon her with so sound a beating of back and shoulders, ribs, arms and legs, saying the while, Wilt thou ever be asking questions about what concerneth thee not? That she was well nigh senseless. Presently she cried out, I am of the repentant. By Allah, I will ask thee no more questions, and indeed I repent sincerely and wholesomely. 
Then she kissed his hand and feet and he led her out of the room submissive as a wife should be. Her parents and all the company rejoiced and sadness and mourning were changed into joy and gladness. Thus the merchant learnt family discipline from his cock and he and his wife lived together the happiest of lives until death. And thou also, O my daughter! Continued the wazir, unless thou turn from this matter I will do by thee what that traitor did to his wife. But she answered him with much decision, I will never desist, O my father, nor shall this tale change my purpose. Leave such talk and tattle. I will not listen to thy words and, if thou deny me, I will marry myself to him despite the nose of thee. And first I will go up to the king myself and alone and I will say to him, I prayed my father to wive me with thee, but he refused, being resolved to disappoint his lord, grudging the like of me to the like of thee. Her father asked, Must this needs be? And she answered, Even so. Hereupon the wazir being weary of lamenting and contending, persuading and dissuading her, all to no purpose, went up to King Sharyar and, after blessing him and kissing the ground before him, told him all about his dispute with his daughter from first to last and how he designed to bring her to him that night. The king wondered with exceeding wonder, for he had made an especial exception of the wazir's daughter, and said to him, O most faithful of counsellors, how is this? Thou wottest that I have sworn by the razor of the heavens that after I have gone into her this night I shall say to thee on the morrow's morning, Take her and slay her. And, if thou slay her not, I will slay thee in her stead without fail. Allah guide thee to glory and lengthen thy life, O king of the age, answered the wazir, It is she that hath so determined, all this have I told her and more, but she will not hearken to me and she persisted in passing this coming night with the king's majesty. So Sharyar rejoiced greatly and said, Tis well, go get her ready and this night bring her to me. The wazir returned to his daughter and reported to her the command saying, Allah make not thy father desolate by thy loss. But Shahrazad rejoiced with exceeding joy and got ready all she required and said to her younger sister, Dunuzad, note well what directions I entrust to thee. When I have gone into the king I will send for thee and when thou comest to me and cease that he hath had his carnal will of me, do thou say to me, O my sister, and thou be not sleepy, relate to me some new story, delectable and delightsome, the better to speed our waking hours, and I will tell thee a tale which shall be our deliverance, if so Allah please, and which shall turn the king from his bloodthirsty custom. Dunizad answered with love and gladness. So when it was night their father the wazir carried Shahrazad to the king who was gladdened at the sight and asked, Hast thou brought me my need? And he answered, I have. But when the king took her to his bed and fell to toying with her and wished to go into her she wept, which made him ask, What aileth thee? She replied, O king of the age, I have a younger sister and leave would I take leave of her this night before I see the dawn. So he sent at once for Dunizad and she came and kissed the ground between his hands, when he permitted her to take her seat near the foot of the couch. Then the king arose and did away with his bride's maiden head and the three fell asleep. But when it was midnight Shahrazad awoke and signaled to her sister Dunizad who sat up and said, Allah upon thee, O my sister, recite to us some new story, delightsome and delectable, wherewith to while away the waking hours of our latter night. With joy and goodly gree, answered Shahrazad, if this pious and auspicious king permit me. Tell on, quoth the king who chanced to be sleepless and restless and therefore was pleased with the prospect of hearing her story. So Shahrazad rejoiced, and thus, on the first night of the thousand nights and a night, she began with the tale of the traitor and the jinnee.